Hello, I'm Johnny and welcome back to my channel. So, I got this book a few months back and I haven't had a chance to look in it because I've got loads of other books I've been getting as well. Um, it's by Patty, I can't pronounce it, Patty Madaris Collier. I've got a few books by her because uh, I like doll making but not all these pretty dolls. Um, usually get the pattern and then uh, make me own doll. But I didn't know anything about uh, beading because it just looks so complicated. So I've seen this book and I thought I'll get it. Um, it's called Creative Cloth Doll Beading Designing Embellishing with Beads. Um, so I thought I'd get this. And here's the other books. I've got these two ones. It was one of them I got really good and it shows, yeah, this is it. Creative doll, uh, cloth doll faces. Yeah, I found that really good. But I didn't bother getting that one, um, cloth doll couture, or fancy clothes and stuff, because I just usually um, design my own clothes for the dolls. Don't like all this fancy stuff. And the main reason I started getting these books is because I was struggling making the, uh, the hands. Um, and I was really chuffed when I'd done it for the first time. Um, so the hands, it was only this <clears throat> this big on a sewing machine and the detail that went into it, I just couldn't believe that I'd achieved that and I was just so chuffed. I suppose I'll be the same when um, I do the uh, embellishments for the first time. Because <clears throat> when you do the beads and stuff, you can make like the te if you just say you were doing like this mermaid, it's the texture of the uh, scales and that. You can just put a few beads on and it just like represents the whole scales. You don't have to go overboard. What did they say? Little goes a long way. So it's just a quick flick through. Yeah, there's the hands. That's when it's sewn and then she's putting the needle in to sculpt the cloth. It'll be to shape the, um, the palm on it where the thumb... And the creases in it. And the faces. Yeah, I did a face for a... It was like a baby doll in a nappy. And I was just in awe of what I'd done. I couldn't believe I'd achieved that. Yeah, uh, that's the hand. Yeah, the hand I don't add wires in the fingers so it could uh, bend and hold things. But mainly it is the faces that I struggle with. Oh, there. Beading and embroidery technique. Just looks so. I mean, this is uh, explaining it in uh, basic detail, but I tried it before and it just it was just so complicated. But um, this will help me a lot. I mean, look at the detail in that. Cause beading can finish a doll off. Yeah, look at that. And I suppose you stick all those pins in place to hold the design down before you actually fix it in place. Oh look, a pair of like flip-flop sandals. Aren't oh, she's you, Ashy, let's see. Yeah, she's even put uh, beads on the um, toenails so it looks like the nails have been painted. Oh, that's clever. Six point flower. See, if I was to look at that on a finished doll, I'd think, oh my God, I'd never achieve something like that. But to break it down like this, I think I would be able to do something like that. And I mean, you don't have to just like put them on a doll. You could put them on other um, work you're doing on. 
like the slow stitching and stuff add interest to the piece there's a um a lady she's called jane jane horrocks is it and she's an author as well and uh, she's also got a etsy shop and she sells her uh, patterns her designs she's got thousands I mean, I don't think I'd uh, go that far and uh, design a whole face in beads. I mean, that must take a long time and I'm not really that fussed on that. I'd rather use paint and sculpt the uh, fabric to shape the nose and the mouth and stuff. I mean, look at that. I mean, how big's the doll? Say maybe the doll's this big, so the face would be like that. Oh. Oh, that must take absolute ages. Yeah, I don't think that's my style of face anyway that I go for. Just like accessories are always looking for. And to do like texture. Interest. Oh, look, I like that. Flor de lace. No, that's really good. Yeah, it's like tattoos all over her body. Or is it supposed to be Mother Nature? Let me read it. Maybe it's a painter in me, but I have a thing for the human figure. And I particularly love hands and feet. To create a more graceful foot, I increased the arch in the bottom of the foot and wired the toes so that I could shape the feet. Her ankles and the palms of her hands have also been needle sculpted to give a more lifelike impression. The body was made from white cotton pinamax and the face was done by applied... Well, wait, I'm trying to get to the bit that she tell it with. After I painted all the body parts, I strung her arms and legs together at the joints with wooden beads over which I wrapped and glued a range of flesh-coloured seed beads. I glued a plastic straw inside each wooden bead. I glued a plastic straw inside each of the wooden beads so that the hands, so that the wrapped threads would not get worn away. Oh, that's a really good idea. Oh, so when you're moving the joints and stuff, I suppose without the straw being there, the threads could uh, get worn and snap. But the straw will stop that. Oh, that's a really good tip, that. Because I make a lot of uh, jointed dolls. Hmm. I'm glad I read that bit. Um... Once she was strung together, I pinned drifts of white floral lace over her body until I was happy with their position. I used my Joe Sanchez acrylics to paint the flower motifs over which I brush dried pale gold, various flowers, scrolls and leaves were embroidered with seed beads before gluing each motif onto her body. Oh, I see. So that looking at her, she looks more complicated than what she is. She done the designs of the beads and then glued them down where I thought she'd sewn them straight onto the limbs. Right. See? Read the details. Oh, well, I'll be trying that. Because that looks really good. Like tattoos all over. Unless she's supposed to be Mother Nature and it's just like... Flowers and stuff all are real flowers. Um, blah, blah, blah. For a special touch, I had some beautiful Czech crystals that I glued randomly over her lace-encrusted body. Finally, I added some paint to her bare skin with swells and common strokes of gold. The final effect is quite rich, yet rather subtle at the beaten is not excessive. Hmm... That's absolutely gorgeous. 
I'm not fussed on that one. See, these books are really useful. I struggled with uh, jointing them together and then I got my first book, um, How to Make Dolls, and then I overcame that problem. But now I'm wanting to get into, um, you know, the clear ball jointed dolls. They look so complicated. I've just made two heads, well not just, um, a few months back. And I haven't had time to make the bodies or anything. So that will be an experience, because you've got to hollow out the body to put the joints in. And I'm scared that the clear will crack. But I mean with it being air dry clear, I can um, repair that quite easily. There's the gallery. Absolutely amazing. Oh, there wasn't much. I thought it was going to show you a lot more than that. Let's see. Chapter 5, Wings and Things. A tail for the mermaid. Oh, I was making her. I wanted to make a mermaid, but like a cross, like a mermaid rat. And that was unsuccessful. So I'll have to go back to the drawing board with that. I think where it was, I was trying to make the body more complicated than what it was. That's why it never worked out. But uh, with these dolls, you can't expect to make a perfect doll each time and you learn loads by your mistakes because I've made loads of mistakes and I've learnt so much over the years. And this is more the gallery, the aging hippie. Oh, and there's uh, pattern pieces. I've got all these patterns anyway. But it's nice to know that they're in the book. Because um, some second-hand books you get, somebody's already removed the patterns, which is a bummer. But it's best when you get these books to trace it out, put it onto cardstock and keep them. Don't ever cut them out of the book, because when you give it away, you want somebody else to get as much pleasure out of the book as you did. About the authors. Um, Patty came to the doll world via a fine arts world. She found that her training and artistic skills have helped in her doll designs. Yes, um, I create quite a few dolls. My own designs. She began painting portraits in oils and pastels, oh, which I want to get into as well. While living in Japan, she studied the art of kum, kumiohono, Japanese braiding using a maru dye and bobbins. Um, I won't get into all that because I just get tongue tied when I'm reading. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you're into um, making dolls, I suggest you get this book because um, with dolls always comes the embellishments and stuff. And this will help me a great deal. So in the future I will try all this out. I've got so many things that I want to do at the moment. Um, yes, so it's Creative Cloth Doll and Beading by Patty Madaris. I can't pronounce that at all. Yeah, so who's the publisher? Quarrybooks.com And the original price was $14.99 UK, $24.99 US, $29.95 Canada. But I only paid a few quid for this. 
on eBay. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Johnny signing out. See you, bye.